So it's a very beautiful afternoon outside, already an afternoon. My name is Sana Sajan. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, let's start with my beautiful couplet. It is by one of a very well-known uh, poet in Urdu. His name is Allama Iqbal. Uh, this is in Farsi. I'll start with Barko ho bayaba pech, bar wadiyo raga pech, barke ki be khud peshad, mirad ba sahab andar. There are different uh, derivatives and meanings of this couplet, but uh, my derivative and my understanding is uh, I looked for you in the mountains, I looked for you in the desert, I looked for you in the caves. When I looked for you inside me, I found you there. So this goes for the highest form of love, which is called ishq, which is for the love of God. You can use it for your girlfriend as well. Um, <laughs> now, the most important thing in life, I believe, is happiness. So I'll be talking a little bit about happiness here and how the external factors affect it, which is called epigenetics. As uh, also the global ambassador for UAE GDA, I am very glad that I'm representing the UAE Ge Genetic Disease Association here. Um, you know, everything when supported by scientific um, uh, documents or something which has a strong base, it is definitely more believable. I'm sure you all agree with that. So now we go here, we go there, everybody's talking about happiness. Think about this, why UAE has established a ministry of happiness. There has to be a reason. They're leading by example. There has to be something underlying. Let's go to something simple. I'm, I'm sure you must have seen some people who were born sad. You must be like, this guy is perpetually sad. You must be seeing some people who are always laughing around, jumping around. You must be like, this guy is born happy, man. This guy has like, got positive energy. Why? There is a reason. I'll tell you very simple. Some people are really born happy and some people are really born unhappy. Do you know why? There is a gene. It is called happiness gene. That gene is active in some people and it is inactive in some people. And that gene, I'm sorry for the people who are born with inactive gene, but actually I should support with another thing. You do not lose hope. Why? There is something called epigenetics. Epigenetics is something which are external factors which can actually affect your genes for making them dormant, making them quiet, making them active again. So for people who are born with quiet or maybe sleeping happiness gene, they should not lose hope because 60% of the factors are actually responsible for the happiness, which are external. And only 40% of original genetics is responsible for what you were born with, okay? So there's hope. There's actually 60-40 hope, yeah? So that's good. Now, bringing to light, maybe I would like to ask people, you know, what is it that brings you happiness? Some people say, hugging my child. Some people say, hmm, maybe a big uh, vanilla and chocolate shake. Okay, maybe some people think about their parents uh, cooking something at home, yeah? Yeah, my mother's... Um, kosheri is amazing. Okay, so why? Because those things, they have certain elements which scientifically affect us in making us happy. It is true that sweets are one of the things. It is true that some salts in the pickles make us happy. So it's right that those things when we eat make us happy. Now happiness in reality with genetics is attained when you stay in the state of happiness for a little bit longer period of time. Now, how does that happen? Of course, we have to put in an effort. Plus, we add in a certain form of perfumes. We add in a little bit of food. We add in a little bit of good friends. And of course, we add in a little bit of serotonin with the form of exercise. If we combine these external factors, guys, that's 60%. You can actually make that activate your genetics. And then you go ahead and be happy in your life. Now, coming to me, uh, a lot of people say that, Sana, you know what, you're just making it up because you're happy and people tell you that you're like really born happy. I actually put in a conscious effort for that. So we know a lot of things theoretically, but what happens that we just pass it because there's so much going on in our lives that who will think about happiness? But the truth is that we are all in the pursuit of happiness. And that's the only thing that we are neglecting. So what is it that we need to think of to be happy? we need to think of the positive side of everything. 
By Harvard, it is said that there is a 50% decline in heart disease and risks dying, deaths of heart diseases because of a person, if that person is optimistic. 50% chance, guys, that's a huge one, okay? And it's supported by Harvard studies. Now, what is it that I'm going to do? Well, um, just two days ago, I went and bought a bike. Um, all licensed, so no need to worry about that. Why did I go buy a bike? It gives me happiness. As long as I'm doing things which do not harm me and do not harm the other person, and it's giving me happiness, I should go ahead with this. That's the most important thing, the assertiveness in happiness. We all know about passive, aggressive, and assertive communication rules. The same applies in our lives as well. We do not have to be aggressively happy. We do not have to be passively happy. We, do, we just need to be in the middle, where we meet everything in the middle. Now, what's important? Um, I also believe that being selfish is very important in happiness. I'm sure everybody's going to ask, actually, yesterday when we were discussing that, okay, uh, what am I going to talk about? So I mentioned selfishness. People are like, why are you going to talk about selfishness? It's such a negative term. But that's the whole point. It's the perspective. Where am I sitting and how do I look at something? So I believe being selfish is one of the main ways of how you can go to happiness. How? Um, I hug my little baby because it gives me happiness. Okay? It's not giving the baby actually happiness. It's for me. I'm just hugging the baby for myself. So that's selfishness. I am loving my husband because that's giving me happiness. Okay, his happiness is just a byproduct. I go do charity because it gives me happiness. So always remember when we are doing something good, it is for our own selfish reasons. Do more good. That's what I prophesize. As the director of the Danny Welfare Center, when people say, oh my God, you're doing so many good things in life. I'm like, yeah, I'm very selfish. <laughs> it's very simple. So go ahead, do more charity. When you do charity, your happiness quotient goes up. When you are giving to the person, that person's happiness goes up. So what's happening? Everybody's happy. Dubai's happiness quotient is rising. UAE is rising. The world is rising. So I believe loving people and doing charity is the most selfish feeling on the world. But I say, go ahead and be selfish because it's for our own good. And everybody gets happiness in the end. Um, I really thank everybody over here to be listening to me. I do not have a very long uh, discussion, but um, just very simple things. Add on when you go home and any external factor which you can put in for happiness and work on it over 20 days. It's a very, very well-known rule, but work on it for 20 days and just see how it affects you and how perpetually you become happy and then you will not be envious. And remember, smile and be selfish. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sana. May I please request you to stay on stage? And uh, may I now request Mr. Kamal Puri, our founder president of Skyline University College, to present her with a memento. Oh, how wonderful. Thank you.